All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word in sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I'm the brother Taza War from the GMS New Jersey camp. And this one is a quick hit, straight to the point. This is uh, 2nd Edris, chapter 16 and verse 17. Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? Now, this is Edris, uh, which in his chapter, you know, he has a vision that the Most High gave him. And it's the vision of the end. Okay, seeing Jacob's trouble, seeing the uh, calamities and woes, all right, the destruction upon the Lord's people, and not only the Lord's people, but the rest of the world, these other nations. So it says, 2nd Edra 16 and 17, woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? Now, Edris is shook because, you know, he knows that in these days, which is these days to come today, all right, that he will be in the midst of this. So this is another scripture that proves reincarnation in scripture. All right. So Edris, all right, he says, who will deliver me in those days? Who's going to deliver Edris? Yahweh Shai. Now it says, verse 18, the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and of and the powers of the and the powers shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? So he just re, you know, reiterating, you know, the point of him being in these times. And what are these times? These times are called Jacob's trouble, which we're in now. And, you know, you could say we're in the beginning of Jacob's trouble. And this is the vision that Edges have seen. Okay, so real quick, I want to get a quick precept. Um, this is Job 30 and 6. It says, Ask ye now and see whether a man do travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his loins with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. At last, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. All right, so we're in that season of Jacob's trouble. All right, and it says, but he, who is that he? That would be the elect of Jacob. It says, he shall be saved out of it. Okay. So the elect is going to be saved out of Jacob's trouble, which Edris is of the is of that elect. So it says the beginning of sorrows and great mournings. You could clearly see that we in the beginning of sorrows, starting with this covert operation, you know, dealing with this hoax of pandemic of uh, C-19. All right. Going back, I think this started in March. Or was it May? March or May, one of them. You know, you see that they shut down. We was in quarantine, all right, in a state of medical martial law. And they're even talking about a second wave coming in October. Okay? So these are you can you can consider you can say that we're in what? Those uh you know, those contraction pains. All right, as it's written in the scripture as well in chapter sixteen. All right, but um it says um the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death. All right. The beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? You know, what what, what are the men of the Lord going to do? All right. We're going to have faith in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. That's why the Lord uh, said he would send the comforter. Okay. The comforter, which is this word. All right, of the Raka Kodash, which is spirit, holy, holy spirit. And that's to have the knowledge and understanding and wisdom for the stability of thy times. You know, of these times. All right, to keep us stable. That will be his word, which is the comforter. So what shall I do when these evils shall come? Now, let me get a quick precept here real quick. Uh, that I had queued up. This is uh, Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 8 it says therefore wait ye upon me say of the lord until the day that i rise up to the prey for my determination is to gather the nations 
that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. So we're going to wait upon the Lord. All right. The Lord told us that he, um, he said to wait upon me. All right. Say if the Lord, Yahweh, until the day that he, that I rise up to the prey. So Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is going to rise up to you Edomites. Going into Revelations where, um, where Yahweh Shai shall stand up against the beast. Okay. Who shall, who shall come against uh, the beast? That's Yahweh Shai. It says, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Okay? Now, uh, Baba Kushai, Salakia. All right, Salakia, I just wanted to grab this quick precept. Because um, scriptures say in Revelation 13, who shall make war with the beast? All right, who's going to make war with this beast? Okay, is Yahweh Shai. This is Revelation chapter 12 and 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and, and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought against the angels. Okay, and going against the ten, uh, what is it? The seven heads and ten horns. All right, which consists of NATO and the EEC, the European Economic Community. All right. And uh, today in 2020, I believe there's 27 members of that party. OK, which make up the beast. And it says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and fought. And the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the and Satan which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. All right. It says, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our power and the power of his Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, okay, the Messiah, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before the Most High day and night. And that's Esau. So Esau is going to be cast down and he's, uh, in this end of the world, which is the end of his rulership that we're living in and which we're approaching. You can see America is at its end. All right. They're not going to stop um, with what, let me say, these Edomites are not going to let normalcy of things you once knew until you accept the mark of the beast, okay, which is the RFID microchip. And I must say also, you know, they want to, you know, as of right now, they, they looking to force, you know, those digital vaccines. But even with that being the end, the end goal of things, you know, you got to see for what Esau's mindset and his, what he called a utopia you know, of his future, of his heaven. You know, he wants to live, he wants us to live as transhumans, cyborgs, you know, human, merged with machines. He wants us to live amongst robots, AI intelligence. You know, he wants to have drones in the sky. You know, he even want drones to be police officers, you know, or I should have said um, robots. You know, this devil have a sick mindset, but, you know, the water Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, he's going to cast this devil down. Okay, it says, and they overcame him by blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. Okay, so, all right, let's go back to uh, Edris here. It says, the beginning of, uh, verse 18, the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? What we're going to do, that's waiting on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It says, verse 19, Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. All right, and that'll probably be the title of this lesson, Scourges for Amendment. All right, because the Lord is sending famine, plague, tribulation, 
and are sent for scourges for amendment. Now, I did a quick Google search on the word scourge. Scourge, right? It says a whip used as an instrument of punishment. Okay? It says a whip used as an instrument of punishment. It says a person or thing that causes great trouble or suffering. And that's Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? Okay, the Lord is sending evil upon the wicked. All right, that's what, um, you know, uh, what what the Lord instruments of punishments are for. All right, those that are evil, those that are wicked. All right, a whip used as an instrument of punishment, a person or thing that causes great trouble or, or suffering. So let's use this first one here. A whip used as an instrument of punishment. So what is the instrument of punishment? Famine, plague tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment now i did a google search on amendment you know but to get a better understanding of amendment you know i went here to the etymology and what we have here it says amendment betterment improvement of persons correction reformation okay reformation all right. Betterment, improvement, correction, reformation. All right. You have uh, rectification, correction, advancement, improvement, amender, amend, uh, expanded to include correction of error in a legal process. All right. Alteration um, to remove its faults. All right. To remove its faults. So. The Lord is sending these uh, this whip of punishment, all right, which is famine, plague, tribulation, and anguish. It says are sent as scourges for amendment. For what? For correction. All right. So Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is bringing, all right, these instruments of of His vengeance that He used upon the wicked for what? Betterment, for improvement. And how is that so? Okay, you have two thirds that despise this word. Okay, and the scriptures say in Second Edges nine, they shall know it after death by pain. So in order for the Lord to correct two thirds of His people, they gotta die, and not only die but die of a grievous death. Okay, die of what? One of these instruments: famine, plague, tribulation, and anguish. Okay, you know. It says are sent as scourges for amendment. All right. Um, so amendment, betterment, improvement. So you would say, well, what about the elect? Well, the elect is going to, okay, is going to be what? Changed, correction, and to that perfection. All right. Which um, the Lord is going to activate that new covenant. All right. Which is uh, going to be fulfilled where he's going to take the stony heart out and give us the heart of flesh. To make the elect perfect with with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know, never to go off. Okay, always keep the law. It's going to be in our inward parts. All right, we won't have to teach each other. We don't have to worry about a brother going off or a brother offending another brother. Scriptures say, "Love worketh no ill to his neighbor." So it says betterment. So everything that the Lord is bringing upon the earth is really purification. Okay, to clean. All right. To uh, turn the right to the up upside, because right now you have the left, you know, which is the wicked, you know, as a pedestal, you know, being on, on the top. So the Lord is changing the roles here. All right, the, it's a transformation of power from one kingdom to another, which is the wicked kingdom leaving out and the righteous kingdom coming in. So it says betterment, improvement of persons, correction, reformation. So the Lord is reforming. All right, the world, not only starting with his his uh, elect, you know, then cleaning up the two thirds and then setting the record straight with the wicked, which is Esau. You are the nations going to captivity, but the Lord is going to set the earth in its perfect form. OK, he's going to, you know, really uh, he's going to reform the animals. OK, into their truest state, the, the fruits, the food, 
All right. Everything. Everything is going to be perfect. We're going to be in paradise. All right. Here on the earth as it is in heaven. All right. Which that prayer, you know, it really means, you know, the order that's in heaven is going to be here on earth. And we're going to keep the Lord's ordinance. Okay. You know, so that's basically my point, you know, for this video. I hope you were edified. All right. Title of this lesson will be Scourges for Amendment. It's needed. You know, so the water Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right. You know, and that's why scriptures say, seek the Lord while he may be found, because the elect is going to find the Lord. All right. And they're going to have that mercy of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai to get through these troubled times and ultimately be delivered and be changed. As Paul said, changed in the twinkle of an eye, you know, and, and we almost out of here. All right. Let me make mention of one more thing. You had the U.N., Secretary General, we read an article this week in camp, and you could pull this up. It was actually uh, the, the dude, Dabu, all right? He pulled it up and uh, kind of reported it, and that speaks volumes, man. He said, the Secretary General said that if the world doesn't accept the policy of the UN, then we're going to have a five to seven year of recession, all right? So it's going to be trouble. And why? Why? And he said, even though if you do the five to seven years, this, it's going to all it's going to be the same outcome. You know, at the end of it, it's going to be accepting the U.N. policies. OK, so what 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 possibly could they do? How can they say that? Because why they have stopped, you know, the uh, circuit. OK, the circuit of money flow, the circuit of cargo goods, the circuit of resources. You know, the circle, the circuit, you know, why it's circuit through the through the world for you to be at ease as far as the normalcy of things you want to know. They could stop it, okay, and bring hardship, you know. But ultimately, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is setting these devils up in a way it's spiritual, man. Even how they have an agenda and they're going after they're going after their agenda in stages. You know, it just reminds me of these birth pains here, okay. Which I should read because it's all through the Lord. The Lord is setting these devils up to set the stage up for Yahweh Shah's return. So I'll read this real quick and I end the show. This is 2nd Edge 1636. Behold, the word of the Lord, receive it. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spec. Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. It says, As when woman as when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son. With two or three hours of her birth, great pains come past her womb, which pains when the child coming forth, they slack not a moment. So you got to, you know, image this, man. The Lord speaking metaphors. So he's comparing the prophecies to a woman that's ready to give birth. And brothers who might uh, have women, uh, uh, children, you know, and went through that whole little thing, you know, being with your woman, being in the hospital, in the room. And you see that, you know, she, her water broke and, you know, she go through these contraction pains, but they tell you the baby is not ready to come yet until, you know, her, 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 you know, she, she opened up the centimeters. They call it the centimeters. Her womb opened up even further. You see the top of the head of the child. And then that's when it's coming. You know, you ain't got to worry about the contraction pains. It's going to be pain until that baby be delivered. And that's how these prophecies is going to come. And that's why it's going to come fast when it come. What's that? Uh, Hagar 2. The vision is set for an appointed time. At the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will not tarry. It says, verse 39. Even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth. And the whole world shall mourn. And you can see that the world is mourning. Because Esau set off an operation. A covert operation around the world. And all of the kings of the world. All right. Sat down with the kings of Edom. Okay. Starting with these Rothschilds, and they came together to form their new world order. One world government, one world currency, one world religion. Um, shall mourn, and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. O my people, hear my word, make you ready to thy battle, and then, thou, and then those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. So we're going to have to be like pilgrims. So even reading on in, in these few verses, the Lord really set the tone and how to conduct yourself in thy times, all right? Having that knowledge and wisdom to be the stability of thy times, you know, because if you're a man that, you know, may have business, you may be a person who sells things to make a living, 
You may be a person who buy things that make a living. You know, even a brother coming into this truth, the Lord tell you here in 44, verse 44, they that marry as they that shall get no children and they that marry not as the widowers. So you shouldn't have that mindset of, you know, at this very moment in a time of like, you know, oh, you know, I'm, 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 I know I'm in the truth now. I know the truth. I know the name of the Lord and I want me a woman. I want to have kids. My son going to be in the truth. My daughter going to be in the truth. You know, they're going to be born in the truth. We're going to walk around together with same outfits, matching. We're going to go to these bars. Nah, I shouldn't be in that spirit, man. Should not be in that spirit. The Lord told Jeremiah not to take a wife in this place. Why? Because the Lord was going to bring great calamity. All right? You know, it says, and therefore, they that labor, labor in vain. So if you got this spirit all about getting the money, you better know how to cut that spirit off when it's time, you know, to live as a pilgrim, to move. Don't be worried about, you know, when this time come, may the Lord pour his Holy Spirit upon us all, brothers. And I say this for myself, too, you know, that we have this spirit here, you know, to not be greedy, not to look back. Going into that story with uh, Lot and his wife looking back, you know, you might have to leave the house and you ain't got a book bag. All right. You ain't got nothing, no water stored in the bag or, you know, uh, anything, you know, clothes. What the Lord told the disciples, um, take no purse, take no thought, you know, you know, take no extra sandals, you know, because that he he made them do that. I believe that's in Matthews. He made them do that to uh, exercise faith. So I hope this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, but Hashem Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the Lord's whole four elect. Shalom.